everyone, welcome to Weekly Weird News for this week, and uh, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. We'll hear about them later. Yeah. Australia! The land down under. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Australia, one of its defining characteristics is that as soon as the British showed up in 1788 to colonize it, the delicate, self-contained ecosystems of the Australian continent immediately just got totally fucked up. And for the next 150 years or so, a whole lot of native Australian plant and animal species just went extinct, before anyone even sat up and thought why this might be happening. Oops. Turns out when you show up halfway around the world with plants and animals from back home, it kind of throws off the balance of everything, uh, especially when the place that you're bringing those plants and animals to has been uh, basically completely isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years. It just fucks everything up. But England's an island, and Australia's an island. Should work, right? I don't know. Seems seems. Seems like a plan to me. Well, and the other thing that we also know about Australia is that our Australian accents are perfect. And we're going to be using those. Maybe. Oh, definitely. All right. Well, to their credit, nowadays the Australian government and most of Australian society is on board with the idea that drastic measures need to be taken to preserve what's left of Australia's native flora and fauna. As you'll recall, three years ago, Johnny Depp and his then-wife Amber Heard smuggled their pets into Australia or uh, the pet dogs into Australia while Depp was filming a movie. Uh, it became a huge national incident. Uh, and as silly as it seemed at first glance, Australia was right, damn it. Johnny Depp, he was just being an entitled drunk asshole. Uh, these are my dogs. There's no laws when you're high on wine. Yeah. Uh, those dogs, they could have been carrying diseases and parasites, and bringing parasite and disease-ridden foreign animals into Australia is how the whole mess started in the first place. Yeah, I don't care if you're Johnny Depp. There's a whole Simpsons episode dedicated to there this. There is, and that's a very accurate episode. Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the first places I learned about all this yeah. shit. But yeah, in addition to diseases and parasites, though, the problem with a lot of Australia's non-native animals is uh, what they do to the food chain. The most notorious example of this is the cane toad. Originally native to Central and South America, cane toads were imported to Queensland in the 1930s to kill the beetles that were eating the sugarcane crops, and their population just exploded very quickly. Cane toads fucked things up on both ends. They were eating all the bugs that Australia's native wildlife depend on to survive, and they were killing most of the animals who tried to prey on them because turns out cane toads are poisonous, and if you get one in your mouth, you're probably gonna die. So they're doing quite well. The dingo had no idea what it was doing when it put that cane toad in its no, mouth. It didn't. Looks delicious. Maybe dingoes wouldn't kidnap so many babies if you'd cover your babies in poison. Mm -hmm. You ever think about that, Australia? Poisonous babies. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, anyways, uh, a big part of Australia's conser uh, conservation efforts is to basically genocide the animals <laughs> they originally brought over, which are unwittingly genociding Australia's native species. And while most people can hear, we gotta kill a million cane toads, or a million foxes, and can very easily understand why this must be done, guess who else is on Australia's kill list? Kitty cats. Little baby kitty cats. Aww. And, you know, for a lot of people, especially non-Australians, the Aussie government's official plan to kill two million cats by next year, it's quite upsetting. Yeah. It's sad. I'm sorry, it's, uh... We're doing what had to be done. Now, to be fair, we're only talking about feral cats here. Australia does not have a policy of busting down apartment doors and shooting people's pets in the face. Not like here in the good old USA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at least not yet. But cats aren't native to Australia, and while we think of them as pets, they don't really have any need for that arrangement. It's more for us. Mm -hmm. They do just fine on their own. And in the wilderness of Australia, they've been doing fucking great. So great that a number of species that they prey on are now in danger of extinction if nothing is done about these damn cats. So back in 2015, the Aussie government released their Threatened Species Strategy Summary, which called for two million feral cats to be killed across Australia by 2020, as well as fully eradicating the feral cat populations on five Australian islands. Uh, Australia's entire feral cat population is estimated at between two and six million. So killing two million of these cats, it's a large undertaking. But considering that these feral cats annually kill an estimated 377 million birds and 649 million reptiles... Bloodthirsty, my and, god. ...and are believed to be directly responsible for extinctions of native creatures like the broad-faced potaroo, the crescent nail-tail wallaby, the big-eared hopping mouse, and the burrowing betong, betong, Anyways, it's, it's called booty. Yeah, the booty. Uh, this cat genocide, it's believed to be necessary for the greater good. There are dozens of native Australian species currently at risk of suffering the same fate thanks to cats. Here are the species. The numbat. The mala. The greater bilby. The golden bandicoot. The brush-tailed rabbit rat. 
The Eastern Betong. The Western Quall. The Eastern Quall. The Kangaroo Island Dunnut. The Leadbeater's Borsum. The Central Rock Rat. The Gilbert's Perderoo. The Black Footed Rock Wallaby. The Woylie. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas Island Flying Fox. The Mahogany Glider. The Mali Emu Wren. The Helmeted Honey Eater, the Hooded Plover, the Mally Fowl, and many more. Yeah, you can't really tell based on the names assigned to them, but Australians nowadays respect the hell out of their native species. And uh, when the cat genocide was announced, most everyone was on board. A lot of people even saw this as an opportunity to add cats to their diet. Okay, I mean, you might as well eat them if you're gonna kill them. Yeah, don't let it go to waste. Now, some towns, like the Queensland town of Bananashire, <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yes, I... Banana I, Shire! The year was 1789. We'd been set up for at least a year before we started exploring the vast, unkempt wastelands of Australia. And we came across a, a lovely little place filled with bananas! Not sure if they were brought here, probably were, but we decided to name it Banana Shire. Banana Shire. And so it stays to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ridiculous names in this, but who are we to judge? Uh, anyways, uh, yes, the whole eating the whole cats thing. They even set up a local cat scalp bounty program <laughs> offering 10 jewelry dues for every cat scalp brought in. You know who would do good at this? The kids from Gummo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, put them to work. Or like, yeah, it's, I need 10. Kitty cat scalps from each one of you boys. <laughs> I want my scalps. I want my scalps. <laughs> Give me that like, pussy scalps. Why does it have to be scalps? They, cats are tiny. You throw like 20 of them in a box. Like it's not like taking a man scalp. You're like, oh, I don't want to haul this 200 pound man back to my Native American camp. So I'll just take the scalp. So I, and also, I don't know how much work it is to scalp a cat, but it seems like more work than just like, I don't know, chopping its tail off or something. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do either, nor would I ever ejaculate. I need those scalps! Nor would I ever ejaculate on a cat like Shane Dawson, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. world is weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna get mad at Australia killing two million cats and just look the other way when a popular YouTuber has sex with one? Yeah, and he, then he got a meeting Hypocrite. with, uh, with uh, the CEO of YouTube right yeah, after. Yeah, it only does good for your career, apparently. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as for how you kill a cat, well, there's more than one way to do it. <laughs> oh. Uh, using a rifle or a bow is the most straightforward method, but a more passive approach that's gotten popular in Western Australia is um, cooking up delicious sausages filled with kangaroo meat, chicken fat, a tasty mix of herbs and spices, and enough poison to kill a cat. And then just airdropping thousands of those sausages from airplanes all over the Australian wilderness. Two questions. Are other animals not eating these? Because it seems like they would. Well. Ricky, the specific poison that they're using here is called 1080, and it's derived from a native plant in Australia that all of Australia's native animals have an immunity to. Whoa! So it only kills invasive species like cats, foxes, and human beings. Second question, <laughs> why is no one set up, uh, upset about all the kangaroos they're killing for the meat? Uh, cause kangaroos, they're like rats, like they're never gonna go extinct. All right. There's a, there's a bottomless supply of kangaroos. Okay, great. You kill them and they, they're literally 10 more will p hop up. Yeah. Ten feet in the air. Kind of like a pinata. Yeah. Yeah. They explode yeah. right out of the pouch. Yeah. Kangaroos, I think they're, they're still among like the least <laughs> endangered animals yeah. in the world. Not endangered. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the guy who developed this sausage recipe, known to his colleagues as Dr. Death, says that he took great care in coming up with the recipe. Quote, they've got to taste good. They're the cat's last meal. And that's why I've personally tried every one. Because <laughs> as a local, mm -hmm. I'm not affected by the poison, mm -hmm. as you can clearly see. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, your eyes are bulging out of your head. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, other solutions include a robot placed in the wilderness that detects when a cat is passing by and sprays it with poison, which is funny to think about in a dark way. Uh, the cat ingests uh, the next time that it grooms itself, uh, or in injecting poison capsules into the skin of prey animals, which activate uh, in the presence of stomach acid. So, decoys. Yeah, but again, the most direct solution is for hunters to go out and shoot the cats to death, and that's happening, though it hasn't really gone over that well with the global animal-loving population. For example, a professional bow hunter named Zach Slattery, he got much of the internet very angry at him after posting pictures of himself posed with some dead cats that he killed back in 2016. Yeah. Little did he know, he wasn't a hero outside of the Australian wilderness. Yeah. Yeah, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation then interviewed Zach Slattery about all that, and they joined him on a hunt to sort of, you know, see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, he told them this, quote, 
I've had death threats, like people coming to shoot me, hang me, skin me, and use me as a bathroom rug. I definitely see the problem that people have with bow hunting, but some people don't understand the effort and the shots that we make are 100% humane 99% of the time. With a bow, it's quite sudden. You're going for shock and blood loss. Now, of course, immediately after saying that, ABC showed him get his one successful kill of the day, which involved the cat not immediately dying after getting shot in the fucking head with an arrow, and then Zack shooting it again, and the cat still not dying, and instead running away terrified with two arrows sucking out of his body. Also, like, at one point getting stuck in a fence. Like, it was, it was <laughs> absolutely brutal. The worst, yeah. It's very humane, you see. Okay, well, this one, we got a tough one on our hands. He'll die, don't worry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The online hate mob against this guy, it didn't really improve once the segment aired. Uh, you could say it got a little worse. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, hunting cats with a rifle, though, seems a lot more effective, and the news segment hilariously featured this footage of a hunter down at the rifle range practicing on possibly the funniest paper target we've ever seen. Uh, anyways, a lot of what we talked about here comes from a New York Times article published this week, and let's just read the final paragraph of that article as it's written. Long after midnight, as the truck turned back towards the farmhouses and the men shot their fifth or sixth cat, Mark W. opened one up to find that it had been carrying five kittens that were close to term. Their skin was translucent and velvety, and when he took them out of the cat, they made their first noises. Five little killers, he said, and so they wouldn't suffer alone in the cold night, he used a knife to cut their heads off. Fucking <laughs> Christ. Jesus Christ. Pre it's pretty rough stuff if you happen to like cats, which I do. <laughs> Uh, but as ecologist Catherine Mosby told the Times, I'm not prepared to sit back and let endangered species go extinct because I don't want to kill any cats. If you follow their line, you'll end up just with cats and cockroaches. Nobody wants that. I never thought about that. Yeah, there's, oh, there's no, not going to be anything left but co cockroaches. But cats are uh, they're survivors. Yeah, we'll see how they do it surviving in Australia. Well, not very well so far. Yeah, they're losing the war, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, two million. It's a lot. Speaking of death, though, it's going to happen for you eventually, and up till now, your options for what happens to your lifeless corpse have mostly been limited to either burying it in the ground or setting it on fire, neither of which is very environmentally friendly. If you get buried after an open casket funeral, all the toxic embalming chemicals in your body are going to eventually leak into the soil. Bad. And uh, cemeteries, they also take up a lot of otherwise usable land. Mm -hmm. Cremation, meanwhile, uses a lot of energy and puts a bunch of smoke in the air. If you live up in Washington State, though, you may soon have a third option, which avoids all this collateral damage. Composting that fresh, wet body of yours into usable soil. Nice. Uh, there's a new law up there that's made its, its way through the state legislature, and it just got signed off by Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who is apparently running for president, because yeah. well, who okay. isn't at yeah. this point? Uh, so soon, you'll be able to have your body sent to a farm great description, where it's covered in straw and wood chips and left to stew for about a month until it turns into soil. Your family can then take that soil and do with it as they please. <laughs> you could use it to grow weed. That's also legal up there, so yeah. that's fine. Uh, it's a process that's been used for years to turn dead livestock into dirt that plants crave, and it soon might be an option for you. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. I mean, my goal is to get shot into space, even if it's just like my ashes or whatever. Yeah. It's expensive, though. I know, but I will be a guardian of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's better for the Earth to do this. It's a lot more meaningful, but it, it's still kind of expensive at around $5,500, according to one of the companies who's gearing up to tackle this new industry. It's not bad considering the other options. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still slightly better than cremation, which costs around $6,000, and it's way better than burial, which can go for between $8,000 and $25,000. Oh, your grandpa wants the nice stainless steel coffin. Uh, this is the one that he would have wanted if he were here to pick his own coffin. The funeral industry is the worst. It's predatory. It's, it's He awful. wants the velvet cushion inside. Mm. To, it, it has to be comfortable. He's looking down on you right now, and he's saying, Do it. You cheap fuck. Do it for me. Yeah. Get the upgrade. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, $5,500, even if it's cheaper than the rest, still a lot of money to yeah. just get a body to rot into soil. Uh, hopefully, though, this opens the door to even cheaper methods, like my favorite, the uh, Tibetan method of just dumping a body on the top of the mountain and letting the vultures eat it. You're dead. Who gives a shit? Yeah. The vultures, they'll finish you off in, like, under 10 minutes. It's wild. Yeah. Well, you, got, you get turned into soil, and then you plant a lemon tree, and then you're making lemons. Mm-hmm. If we want to make money, avocados. When life gives you death, you make lemons. Turn it into lemons. Exactly. There you go. As, as the old saying goes. Yes. But before you die, you're hopefully living your best life and achieving your true potential. 
For a lot of people, that means peak physical performance, or at least the appearance of it. Uh, you know, you do this by living healthy, hitting the gym, going out for a jog, mm -hmm. avoiding the beer whenever you can, switching to light beer. <laughs> this is especially true in the warmer months when it's, you know, sun's out, gun's out, baby. Show off that bod. Now, getting that beach body, it's a lot of work, obviously, especially if you're not already in somewhat good shape. And as much as everyone wants rock hard, six pack abs, this shit, it's damn near impossible, okay? The, the, the average man has between 18 and 24% body fat, and even if you get your abs rock hard, your body fat needs to drop below 10% for anyone to actually get a good look at them behind that gut. So, yeah. you just get, I got abs, they're just behind They're this. in there. They're in there. They're in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But what if there were a simpler way? Well, there is, kind of. Uh, look at this soft-bellied fella here. Not gonna turn too many heads down at the pool looking like that. Unless it's in disgust. Mm-hmm. Turning my head to puke. Yeah. But here's that same man one year later. Wow! Wow. You could literally do laundry on those there abs. How did he do it? Was it exercise? Nope. Wrong. Mm -hmm. What you see here is a new process called abdominal etching, developed at the University of Miami's School of Medicine. Of course it's Miami. <laughs> And uh, it's basically liposuction, except they, they leave fat behind in some well-placed areas to give the impression <laughs> of muscle mass. It's not even, ugh, this is, it's not even like they're like taking the fat away so that you can see abs that you've actually built on your own. No. They're just building abs with fat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's what they're, that's what they're doing. Uh, the doctors, they can tailor the outcome according to your specific preferences, whether that's some slight definition or a full-blown six-pack. But in order for it to work, you have to spend the next several weeks walking around with these here foam bandages that preserve the, uh, the shape of your remaining fat. Ugh. At least you can wear layers over it so no one sees it, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to, uh, uh-oh, exercise with this shit on you. Uh, anyways, it sounds like this surgery runs between $3,000 and $10,000, which seems like more than enough to pay for a personal trainer for a very long time. But like we said, summer's just around the corner, and sometimes you need those abs right now. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck the a personal trainer. It's a, it's really expensive, so maybe yeah. this is a cheaper altern alternative. It might be. Especially it's, if you're going, like, every day or every other day. They're very expensive. The problem with liposuction, though, is, like, you have to stay in good shape. Like, you, if you ever, like, basically get fat again, you look terrible. And these people, if they get fat again... It's gonna, there's gonna be giant, like, weird ab rolls. It's gonna look horrifying. Mm. Okay. You're not gonna be fooling anyone. Yeah. Washboard rolls. Well, you gotta get it done every year. Yeah, right before I guess beach so. season. Oh, God. Watch a few videos of this. Liposuction is the most horrifying thing. Like, they take, they take that big old stick and they're just like, yeah, there's jamming like, jamming it in your skin. I get it that it's not, like, hurting anything and they know what they're doing. Oh, God. But it looks like they're just so aggressive with yeah, everything. I, I can't. I can't look at it, yeah. but I'm making you look at it right now. Anyway, speaking of bodies, you, could just, good. you could just keep that body of yours covered up. Yeah. In fact, I'd prefer it. And who better to turn to for that than with this week's sponsor, Stitch Fix. They'll cover that body of yours up real good. Mm -hmm. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, budget, and lifestyle. You gotta wear clothes, so you might as well look good while you do it. Whether your style is casual or sophisticated, your Stitch Fix personal stylist will send you clothes to make you look your best. Just go to stitchfix.com slash weird and tell them your sizes, what styles you like, and how much you want to spend on each item. Your very own personal stylist will handpick these items and send them right to your door. And you can even be like, hey, I'm a fat fuck. Can you give me something that's a bit slim? Yeah, they're, they're listening. Uh, you try on what they send, you pay for what you love, and you return the rest. Shipping and exchanges and returns, they're always free. There's no commitment required, and you pay only for what you keep. Stitch Fix's styling fee is only $20, and that's applied towards anything that you keep from your shipment. Uh, get started now at stitchfix.com weird, and you're going to get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com weird to get started today. Stitchfix.com weird. And now let's take a look at some of the weirdest headlines we found around the internet news. Starting with, blind people really do have more sensitive hearing, MRI study finds. Oh, we all knew this. Hate to say I told you so. Mm-hmm. They do. They use echolocation. Yeah, no, the study actually, it's, it didn't say anything about echolocation. What are you hiding? But mm -hmm. uh, it did say they have a better sense of pitch. Ah. So the next time you're around a blind guy, be like, hey, you're blind, right? Sing me a song. <laughs> hey. Everyone he knows. Hey, sing. Traditionally, blinds are the, the best singers. Yeah. 
They just can't find their way onto American Idol. Yeah. Like, lo- fortunately, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder, like someone put a piano in front of them. But yeah. if not, they would have been looking for that piano for the rest of their lives. And we yeah. wouldn't have all this beautiful music. Exactly. So if you see a blind guy, be, for first of all, be quiet. Yeah, be quiet. You, 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 don't you, let like, them know you're there. Yeah, no, you sneak up. They have very sensitive ears. You don't yeah. want to blow. They're like dogs. You can't, you're going to blow their ears yeah, out. Yeah, you want to shove a piano in them and be like, hey, you're blind, right? Sing a song. They love it when you do that. Apologies to all the blind people listening who uh, Elliot just yelled at. All the blind people listening who managed to find and subscribe to our show. And I'd like to say sorry for comparing them to dogs. I meant the hearing of dogs. They have very sensitive (laughs) hearing. (laughs) Uh, We've said worse. Yeah. Students disappointed by a small crowd on 420 at UC Santa Cruz. It's just not cool anymore. You see Santa Cruz, their smoke out, um, their 420 smoke out used to be like a destination. It yeah. was like a it was like a one day burning man for California, Oregon. Like people would come from hundreds of miles away. And it just doesn't have the same like there's no need for it anymore. Yeah, it's not cool to stay home. Get yeah. it delivered. You can go to 420 parties anywhere in the state of California. They're yeah. everywhere. They still they're still a pretty big one. I went to one uh, years ago. Uh, at, I forget what the park name is in San Francisco, but it's like a huge oh, park. Uh, and like at 420. Dolores Park? Yeah, Dolores Park, and everyone just like exhales yeah. at the same time. Yeah. You'll never, uh, it's never going to be like that again. No. Well, now it's too you, cool now. When you we go there. make it illegal again. I know, it makes it way cooler. Ban, ban weed. <laughs> ban weed. <laughs> uh, moving on. Church apologizes after pastor asks students to spit on him and cut him as part of Easter lesson. Hmm. And this is, there's they, all the kids took videos. It's real weird. Yeah, you, well, it uh, just, it sounds weird. There's video like, of it? Yeah, this guy, he's like, he's like, Jesus, uh, when he was, you know, walking to the cross, like, people were, like, spitting on him. They were hitting him. They were cutting him up. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to take my polo shirt off, and I want you kids to spit in my face and slap me. And at one point, he, like, pulled out a steak knife. He's like, come on. Come on, draw some blood. And uh, Also, my safe word is pomegranate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus suffered. Oh, did he took suffer. Off, took off his polo shirt, put on his gimp suit. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh. No, don't do it. Please do it. Please do it. Please do it. I'm, this is for, I'm teaching you about Jesus right now. Yeah. If I get a, if I get a boner, it's a boner for the Lord. It's a boner for the Lord. And if you yeah. stab me with a knife, it just lets all my sins out. Yep. There you go. Uh, yeah, so uh, that was, uh, it's fucking, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> the Satanic Temple is now a registered tax-exempt church, which is awesome. Yeah, they uh, like, so that documentary is like in limited release right now. The Hail Satan one, mm-hmm. really want to see it. But uh, so they they had an internal debate for several years because they're they're against tax-exempt status. Yeah, that's what I figured when I saw this. I was like, oh, they're using it as a way to draw attention to the fact that, yeah. like, the Church of Scientology and, and just every church yeah. has tax-exempt status, and we are just throwing away billions of dollars in tax dollars every year by just letting fucking people spend money on yeah. whips and uh, and uh, getting getting spit on. And it's also, it's also legal as of last year for uh, churches to like endorse candidates and donate to candidates. Yeah, because money is people. Yeah, so they're they're trying to do the same thing. So now basically you can donate to the Satanic Temple and it's you get <laughs> you get a tax write off out of it and they're allowed to like funnel money into any candidate. Cool. Not so, gonna be great for that candidate. Yeah. I mean I, like as much as I appreciate the the Satanic Temple, mm-hmm. uh, anyone that takes a donation from them is gonna immediately just be like, well that campaign's over because of ha- like more yeah. than half of the country. Yeah, uh, I mean, it depends on the district, but it, I think in most cases you, you wouldn't. You, you, they'd probably give the money back. Yeah. I'm sorry, thank you, but no thanks. Can you do this a little more covertly? Yeah. Maybe some shell companies. Mm-hmm. Undercover cops posing as drug buyers arrested by undercover cops posing as drug dealers. Love it. Love it. I feel like this happens every couple of years, and it's yeah, great. It really does, and it's just like wow, cops are uh, really bad at uh, you know. Communication. Yeah, you'd hate to be the buyers in this situation because they probably like uh, someone almost like people almost got killed. Like yeah. there's a, there's a chest cam footage of it. It was a very tense scene. A lot yeah. of just like yelling. Can't hear a goddamn thing. Everyone's just like, oh, good cops, cops. It, yeah, it's uh, things could have gone very poorly. Yeah, and uh, it all started just because like two departments in the same general area didn't let each other know. Like, hey, by the way, we're. Uh, we're posing as yeah, especially like depending on where the location is, you'd feel yeah. like they'd give a, a yeah. cursory call. Yeah, it was a real uh, 
A real goof. <laughs> Big goof. They blew it. <laughs> they totally blew it. Uh, police sees super obedient lookout parent trained by Brazilian drug dealers. That's the guy! It's the cops! It's the cops! You're coming! Flush it! Flush everything down the toilet! Do it now! <laughs> I want cocaine! Yeah, and the, the they're calling him the, the, the papagayo do trafico, mm -hmm. the uh, trafficking parrot. And um, said it, like when the cops showed up, like he was he was all over the place, just squeaking and shit. But as soon as he got arrested, hasn't said a word. Mm. He's kept that beak shut. Yeah, well, because he's no snitch. Exactly. Hmm. If only human people were as as smart as this yeah. bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Dead dog escapes grave, shocks owners after accidentally being buried alive. Yeah. Well, that's good news, though. It sounds like a tie-in to, to Pet Cemetery. No. Nah. Yeah, this dog, this 18-year-old dog, the owner's is like, this dog's fucking dead. Like, we tried waking him up, we're shaking him, nothing's happening. He's like, clearly fucking dead. So let's go down to the Pet Cemetery, let's bury him. And then, like, later that day, the local Humane Society was this on, your dog? on Facebook. They're like, Has any, does anyone know whose dog this is? Like... He finally woke up and he's like, where the fuck am I? And then he walked into the road and someone's like, oh, you all right, little buddy? No. So, uh, my, my someone tried to an, fucking bury He's me. an idiot. I God was asleep. damn it. So, uh, yeah, good for him. Yeah. Good well, dog. Shitty owner. A giant bird killed its owner. Now it could be yours. <laughs> Do you have what it takes to tame this wild beast? This is one of, this, uh, one of these rich Miami guys. He had like, just a menagerie on his property, mm -hmm. including some cassowaries, which are, uh, uh, some believe them to be the most deadly birds on earth. They're basically velociraptors. Like, they'll yeah. fuck you up. This guy had a bunch of them, and he was, like, feeding them one day and fell in the cage, and they just yeah. like, tore them apart. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and now he's dead, so they're having an estate auction, and uh, the murder bird is, is... Are you a bad enough dude to buy this murder bird? I love that in Florida they're just, like... Yeah, the, you, any other state, they'd be like, all right, we have to put this fucking animal down. Yeah, or like take it back to a, like, a, take it to a zoo yeah, like, or right, who wants a it? sanctuary. <laughs> and there they're just like, someone will buy this bird. Yeah, it's a pretty valuable bird. It's, you I mean, know how much these go for? <laughs> and it's Florida, so someone will. Uh, they already yeah. have the stuff that they need to take yeah. care of it. So uh, seems like they're tempting, tempting fate. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. Maybe this giant bird will become a serial killer. I think this bird's going to keep killing until he gets his freedom. Yeah. That's clearly what he wants. Exactly. Popular children to be recruited as anti-drug influencers in government-funded projects. <laughs> At least they're upfront about it. This is the UK, so it's like, you yeah, know, they got a little program for everything. But well, uh, how are they? Okay. There's two, there's two things. Are the popular children popular because they're like actors, singers, YouTubers or whatever, or are they popular? Like, is the government spying on classrooms and being like, yes, that boy there is very, seems to be very popular. It's more He's like the that. Bully. It's less sinister, but it's like, somehow, somehow they're going to find out, like, who the coolest kid in these various classes are. Like, which student is the most influential. And then turn them into a and, narc. And then they recruit them <laughs> and take them on this, like, three-day weekend training program where they're like, you need to, you need to tell the other kids how bad drugs are. Are they going to get paid? I don't know. This it's sounds like it's really not going to work. Yeah, it sounds like it might even backfire. Yeah. <laughs> like, because I know it, if this happened to me when I was in school and I like, I fucking hated these like yeah, extremely the cool kids. and like get the shit beat out of you. I'm going to do twice as many drugs just because he told me I shouldn't. They Are they going to train these children influencers like they train drug dogs to be like, all right, all right, Chad. Come here, you gotta smell the cocaine to get a good yeah. scent for it. And then you get the, this fucking 12 year old hooked on blow. <laughs> you did what last night? Can you say that in a complete sentence, please? <laughs> hey, so you guys went over to- Can you to, say that uh, closer to my chest? You guys went down to the lock-in, the old sock hop down at the school, right? Hopefully there wasn't any opiates around. Yeah, but if there were, who's selling those? And how good does it feel? And how many did you do? And wow. no, I'm not, no, I'm not a narc. I'm a cool kid, do you, have you can those, trust me. Do you have those here right now? Oh, as we all know, the coolest kids in the schools are all drug dealers, so they're just going to wipe this whole thing out anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice try, UK. Yeah. Speaking of influencers, influencer faces up to 20 years in prison after trying to steal domain name at gunpoint. What, who, who is this influencer? He had some uh, social accounts on, like, Instagram and Snapchat uh, where, like, whatever college he was at, it was just, like, basically just, like, girls at parties way too drunk to, like, consent to being filmed, just doing like slutty shit. Mm -hmm. He had a whole thing going for it. What was his name? 
I don't remember. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he, he wanted this one domain name for it, and the guy... There's just so many accounts that film people yeah, uh, which, drunk all the time. It's, which, which one was it? Well, it's, it's not posting anymore. But uh, yeah, the guy didn't want to sell it. And so this guy, he hired his cousin to go drive to this guy's house, like hundreds of miles away, and uh, beat him up and threaten him with a gun. Um, and then that, that all fell apart because like, the owner uh, managed to get the gun away from the other guy and shoot him like seven yeah. times. <laughs> This all really backfired. And, yeah, uh, I'd say so. Yeah, probably not really worth it in the end. Now he's just going to have a prison blog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he tried. Uh, man uses grocery bag as mask during robbery, but removes it to carry loot. So he took it off his face and put the goods in yeah. it? Yeah. He's like, give me, give me, uh, he's at a liquor store or something. Give me that, uh, give me some of uh, the... Oh, all right. all right, cool. Put it in the bag. I'm such an Fuck. idiot. Shit. Well, just act normal. Everybody's cool here. <laughs> he takes it off and he's like... Okay, put it. Wait, who was that guy? Whoa! I'm just your average shopper. <laughs> I think man. he went that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Anyways, can I have some more oranges, please? Yeah. At that point, you just gotta gaslight everyone around you. Yeah. yeah. Like, Whoa! Anyone see that guy? He was crazy. What are you talking about? Yeah, he just ran out. Oh. Just ran right out. Can't believe it. <laughs> Two rival politicians accused each other of using drugs. The result was a showdown at a urinalysis lab. <laughs> well, what happened? Uh, I don't know if the results came back, but yeah, uh, some very petty, like, local city council shit where these two, two people, both Democrats, both same party in the city council, mm. got into a, a fight on the, the comments section of a local, like, <laughs> civics blog, and uh, it escalated yeah. quite a bit. And they, they both demanded, a, a, they wanted to do a piss-off to see who was, who was on drugs. Yeah. So um, uh, it's one, kind of one of those things where, like, no matter who wins... Uh, you know, the the voting population, they lose. Yeah. Because there's a lot of probably taxpayer dollars going to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe you just don't. It is funny, like, these, like, local community blogs and, like, Nextdoor and, like, Facebook groups. It's, like... It's made when, everyone way shittier to each other. Yeah. When you're out it, in public, for the most part, it's, like, you see people and you wave, you say hi. Yeah. Everyone seems friendly. They are fucking assholes online. Well... That goes for anything, but, like... But it's especially with, like... I don't encounter, I mean, I've never used Nextdoor. I have no fucking interest in it, but like. That's pretty great. But I feel, I feel like it's way worse in uh, communities of homeowners versus renters. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't fucking care about a lot of things. It's not my house. If it fell down today, I'd move somewhere else. Yeah. But like, if I owned a house, well, that's the problem it's in like, LA. Oh, that fence is too high. The problem in LA is you have literally houses next to rentals, next to condos, next to apartments, next to houses, next yeah. to. And it's like, so yeah. It's it's a very angry place. These online community. Boards. I mean, I follow like Best of Next Door on Twitter, and like I love I love the screenshots of it. But I'm like, yeah. I'm never gonna join this. This just makes people angry at each other. This is like it's supposed to bring people together, and it's not clearly not having that effect. Oh, just like all social media. So it's like, yeah, yeah. If you ever want to see the angriest people in your neighborhood, just go to like the local community police Q and A night. Because it's like those people are the ones that yeah. show up that are just like, I got nothing better to do, <laughs> and I got some serious problems with you yeah. people. Yeah. <sighs> Hero student drives SUV through St. Louis area high school on ACT test, test day. There's <laughs> another uh, case of just uh, helping out your fellow man by uh, ruining everything yeah. so that you don't have to take a test that you yeah. will probably have to take, almost certainly have to, yes, definitely have to take anyway another day. Yeah, but not today. Not yeah. today. Today the school is a crime scene and we can't have the test. I've been liberated. <laughs> Finally, I can go do whatever it is I do on my high school yeah. days off. And you know this, kid, this kid's a fucking legend now. And soon he's going to be a narc. Yeah, they're gonna be like, "Hey, heard you, uh, heard you got pretty popular after you drove your SUV into the high school. Come you, smell this cocaine. You want to make a little bit of money?" <laughs> Philippines Duterte threatens to declare war on Canada if they don't take back trash within a week. And uh, for the first time in this guy's three-year whatever history of being in charge, I am on Rodrigo Duterte's side. <sighs> Canada, they shipped over a bunch of like re supposed recyclables over to the Philippines where yeah. there's a like there's a big recycling industry. But one of these shipments, none of it was recyclable. It was just garbage. Yeah. And there's been like, it's, been, it's been like 2 years and Canada won't take the fucking trash back. So Duterte's like you better come get your trash. We're going to war. <laughs> just, it's like next door but like for yeah, world leaders. For, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he's also he's like he's like okay, maybe we won't do war, but I definitely want to like Put it all into a dump truck and just take it down to the Canadian embassy and dump it on their lawn. I, like again, I fucking love it. Yeah. Like Duterte sucks. He's a terrible person. In this this one time, I yeah. am on board with Rodrigo yeah, Duterte. Apparently, this happens 
frequently where they'll put all this stuff in shipping containers under like fake company names and manifests and stuff. And once it's gone, it's gone because it'll arrive in like the Philippines or whatever and they can't send it back because no one's like paying for it to go back mm -hmm. unless that country wants to pay for it to go back. Yeah, and someone has to like, you know, receive it. Yeah, it's a... It's a whole, yeah, so it, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Um, Canada, so. come get your trash. Pick your shit up, Canada, what the fuck? Philippines got enough trash as it is. Yeah, I've seen it. It's sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, man makes computer from lasagna. And that man's name, John, what's John's last name in Garfield? Does oh, he have a last God, name? No, uh, John Garfield. John Garfield. His name was John Garfield. Yeah, it's uh, this guy, YouTuber, just makes computers out of weird things. He made this one out of lasagna, and uh, it works. Said it, get, it gets runs a little hot when he's gaming. <laughs> it smells <laughs> but, uh, delicious. It smells put it, delicious. Put it in a pot of water. You, you, once the once the game finally fully crashes, you got yourself dinner. It's yeah. ready to go. Good. Yeah, that's good innovation right there. Mm -hmm. That's the fun tech stuff. Yeah. Yeah, fun tech news. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for Weekly Weird News this week. Be sure to check out our sponsors. And uh, also, if you want to support the show, go to our Patreon. There's a link in the description as well. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Watch this week's episodes over here. There's a new episode of News Dump about how Netflix is saying bye-bye to the office. Uh, and also some gaming news about Epic and their exclusives. Yeah. Well, it might not be exclusive for long. Oh, and come see us at RTX. Yeah, RTX will be there in July. You'll, you'll find the info. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.